This is a very late sequel to my tutorial on how to create a random city in Unreal. Um, in that tutorial I showed you how to create this, which is a very simple city generator. Now, I have a far more complicated version and this is it. It's not. It's a lot more complicated than that old version. And so it's not really possible for me to show you exactly how I did it via a tutorial, but I can show you all the blueprints and explain how it worked. And this is actually the city I'm using in my game, so don't steal it. Now, obviously this is quite a small city, using you know the first architectural style I developed for it. And there's only really three variables that actually impact how a city looks visually. Now the first is the population number. And well, so we can increase this to 200. And that gets you know a lot bigger, huge. The, so, you know, the can increases to absolutely preposterous sizes. However, one thing you will notice is when I do this, it doesn't change dramatically. You know, a city of 100 pops is not 10 times big, bigger than a city of 10 pops. Uh, this is so that the cities don't get unreasonably big. And this is just a bit of code that reinterprets the number. The second important thing is the building pack. So there's several building packs. For instance, this is the desert. Then there's the Eastern, so they're kind of Chinese. And then the Mediterranean, so Greek, etc. And finally, the temperate, so wood. Um, um, I'm generally kind of used to the desert myself. And that's one I've been developing most in. And that's be one of the better looking ones. Now, how this works is each data table is a style filled with different elements. And this is an element. It contains a name which and variety, which is not particularly important. The important thing is the mesh, the use 90 degree rotation, the align to normal, which these mean how it kind of looks in the city. So for instance, this city, everything is already 90 degrees. That's because of the size. If we went down to 11, it wouldn't be. And if we change some of these variables, it could change how it looked exactly. The align to normal means it, it aligns to a hill rather than just staying exactly still. And the vertical tolerance means how much the house is willing to spawn when the, it's on a hill. So if it's a really steep hill, it's less likely to spawn, well, it won't spawn. And if we shine it, it will, and that's defined what tolerance it has by the vertical tolerance. Then there's, all, there's also these uh, random yours, so that's how it's placed. And then also the building scale. And that's true for all of these things. So there's also the last element, the walls. So they're very similar. So you can have such a Mediterranean wall, a um, desert stone, and etc. And also, for instance, for an absolutely huge city, we might want to say, um, is it huge? Now, how these work is they also have a data table, but just a singular one for all of them. And each type of wall is stored here. So, and they're stored with their upgrades as well. So the desert mud turns into desert stone, which turns into desert huge. Same for the other types of walls, so these are not finished. And basically, they're made of a wall component and a tower component. So if we look here, the tower components join at the corners and the wood component, no, so the wall components between those. And that's the basics of how it's put together, you know, when I want to create a new city. But for the actual code, it's all here. Now I'll remove all of this and explain kind of as the code goes by. So when a new uh, city is built, this is the code that's run. Very simple. Uh, first of all, we essentially say, hey, this controls you know, how many buildings there will be for the population. So see we have a power here with an exponent below one, meaning you know, it's gonna go on, it's gonna not get exponentially bigger, it's gonna get exponentially smaller, like a log curve. And then the first thing we have is get next tile. And what this function does is it is it if there's no tiles in the tile array, it will create a new one at zero zero. 
Otherwise, it'll find a random tile and get one that's next to it and check if it's not being used. What this does is it um, means that we'll always find a tile right next to, you know, one that's already being used. So that, um, you know, a city kind of builds itself outwards instead of just randomly appearing at different places. This function is sent to a variable because every time we call it, be random. And then we call the place building function rather large. And what it does is it turns that tile into real space. It selects a random building and then it checks to see can it place the building. And what that is, is mainly looking at, um, hey, is this not too steep? And is this above water level? And then it goes as the static mesh component, chooses which one to use, sets there to be no collision because because of well, this game in particular there needs to be no collision on buildings. Sets the world location and checks some more stuff. Right, so I'm going. This um, this can either fail or succeed. And if it, even if it succeed, even if it fails, sorry, it will be added to the used tiles because we will want to know, hey, that tile is effective. We don't want to use that again. We want to find another one. And if it does fail, we'll say, okay, we'll try this once more for this one building, and then we'll go through the loop. That means that you know we don't get to a point where we're infinitely trying to spawn buildings when that's not possible. We then have the place walls, which places it around the edge and. That gets from the data table. It's pretty similar, but it does use a different function, which is find the ex the best external, which is actually that's outside of this. So, so it gets get external sides, and it checks for all of these things. Make sure there's some, it basically checks each tile, making sure is this tile, and also got a side which isn't blocked by another tile. And if it does, it'll add that to the transformations, which can then place a wall there. And that's what it does. It gets all of these in and it places all the walls there and all the towers. Same rule for setting collision to false. So, and it does this such that um, the player can actually walk in because that wasn't a thing at one point. Where, you know, if the player tried to walk into a city, the walls would just stop them. So I had to fix that. And this is just really simple, you know, messing around with things to make sure it appears in the right area. So, you know, I have, so uh, yeah, that's how the cities work. Um, I hope this tutorial was easy enough to follow. It's not really a tutorial, but um, you know, I can, if anybody wants cover other things I've done in the game, um, perhaps, you know, show, Certain other things like perhaps the spleen rivers or whatever. So drop a suggestion in the comments if you want.